Hi right, guys, welcome to the Clack Shack. And I've had a lot of questions from everybody, or a lot of people, uh, about the kerf of the 20 watt and have I had to change any of my designs and have I had to modify anything because of the kerf. And to address that, I kind of want to go over and, and, and show you uh, some things that I've learned about the kerf. Uh, the X tool, the, the 20 watt, and they, they've addressed an issue with the 20 watt that has existed as far as, as far as I can tell, with any laser, uh, any laser that has to be focused, the the this issue would exist. But I guess because the beam is so much larger, X Tool actually decided to uh, address it by providing a separate adjustment to allow it to be easier to estimate and uh, adjust the uh, the size of the kerf in essence. Uh, and I'm going to show you what that is and explain it to you from the best of my understanding. So uh, I'm gonna pull up some uh, data here that I've got from uh, Xtool and a little illustration that I found and just kind of walk you through uh, my understanding of, of this. Uh, as you all know, and if you don't know, Kerf is the basically is the amount of displaced material by cutting mechanism whether it be a saw blade uh, a laser but uh, with saws if you get a saw and the saw says that the kerf is 1 16th of an inch or an eighth of an inch most skill saw blades or table saw blades will have a round of eighth of an inch kerf and what that means is all the way through your material that kerf is going to be consistently an eighth of an inch because that blade does not change shape or size it's a piece it's a big hunk of steel with sharp edges and it does not change lasers however are different uh, the way a laser works laser light is pulled into a focal point and at that focal point that is where the thinnest kerf possible with that device is the further back you get from that laser focal point the wider the kerf will get and here's my little illustration if i can get it to load my com this computer in the house is being a pain uh, this is my illustration so many of you have heard me say before when cutting with my 10 watt to cheat the focal point down into the wood rather than on the surface of the wood because if you focus your your, your laser on the surface of the material then you're going to have this effect right here and what that is, is the thinnest kerf you have is going to be at the surface of the material because that's where you're focused. All right. The, the bottom side of that cut is going to have a larger kerf because once you pass that focal point, the laser beam becomes out of focus and has a wider footprint as it goes through. Okay. Same thing happens if, if, if you don't get close enough to the material. That's kind of what this illustration is showing is that you, somebody failed to focus at all. And when they did, you know, that's why a lot of times when people get fires on their, their laser, I believe that a lot of that is because they didn't have it properly focused. And when you don't have it properly focused, it, it, it's not going to do what the laser was designed to do. And it's going to have a wider track as it goes around that material which is gonna result in more heat buildup and less penetration into the material. Now, this is what, I know a lot of y'all have heard me say before when I was cutting four and a half millimeter uh, Luon, is I like to cheat my focal point down into the wood. And, and this is kind of what I was talking about. And this, if you, if you look at these three different uh, illustrations, you're gonna have the narrowest kerf doing this. Because if you look at the kerf here and look at the kerf there, what you want to do to minimize kerf on your laser, because I hear a lot of people say, oh, what's the kerf on a 20 watt? What's the kerf on a 20 watt? Well, the kerf on a 20 watt on a piece of eighth inch acrylic is significantly less than the kerf of a 20 watt on a half inch thick piece of acrylic. Because the thicker your material, the higher it, towards the laser you get and the further below the focal point you get the wider uh, the, the where the heat is going to hit the wider it gets and therefore you're going to have the narrowest part of your kerf is in the center and then the widest part toward the edges 
So when somebody asks, you know, hey, what's the curve on a 20 watt? There, there's not a definitive answer for that. There's too many variables, okay? The thicker the material, the wider the curve's gonna be. The thinner material, the thinner the curve's gonna be. So this whole thing, people wanna say, you know, uh, what curve setting are you using? Because I keep getting that a lot, you know? What curve setting are you using? And, and that is a very, very variable answer to that question. And this little illustration here, and it's, uh, this website is a machinery website, but it's, it, it's a pretty, inform pretty good information. This goes to show right here, and I don't know what kind of laser this is or anything. I didn't do that much uh, looking into it, but it goes to show you if you're, out, if you're high out of focus all the way down to focused and then back out of focus the other way, that's what's happening to your curve. The further you get away, the wider it gets. The deeper you go, the bottom side of the material, the wider it gets. So that's what I wanted to point out to everybody. So when people, when you, when you, when you message me and say, hey, what's your curve setting for the 20 watt? Don't be offended if, if I don't give you an answer because it depends, you know. Now, Xtool, I got to give them credit for this. Xtool took some initiative and they had a little insight into that. And instead of me now, you know, used to, I would have to take the little kick stand and I would kind of fold it out, you know, an inch from straight up and down to try to cheat my focal, focal point into the material when I was cutting that four and a half with my 10 watt. But now they've actually taken some initiative. They've created a way that you can actually remove or add, uh, add distance to your focal point without having to mess with the leg, okay? And so that's what I was gonna, that's what I wanna show everybody. Even though the laser spot on a D1 uh, Pro 20 watt is slightly larger than that of the 5 watt and the 10 watt, the curve difference, it really isn't that much more than the difference between the 5 and the 10. It's just, you know, so, but what they did is they have put, and let me see if I can find it on here. I saw it a minute ago. Uh, they have put this secondary adjustment on there. So now when you focus with the little leg, you have the secondary uh, adjustment here. And what you're doing when you, uh, when you adjust this, basically rule of thumb from what I can read and from what I have seen and from my experience is however thick your material is, Half of that is the center of the material. And what they expect for you to do with that secondary adjustment is you want to adjust it to where your focal point is in the center of the material. Why? But one, because you're gonna get better uh, penetration and you're gonna be able to cut thicker material that way because you're kind of splitting the, the, the focus to the point to where it's it's not terribly out of focus on either side of the material because if you focus on the if you focus on the surface of a piece of seven or eight millimeter material by the time it goes through that eight millimeters of material on the back side it is so far out of focus that you're not going to do a whole lot of burning or a lot of cutting you're going to do a whole lot of burning and generate a lot of smoke and that type of thing but this secondary adjustment that they put on here what it's doing is what I've been telling everybody to do is it cheats your focus down into the material and puts the focal point in the center of the material, which means that the top and the bottom are at the optimal location possible for that beam. And as you can see by their illustration, the beam is larger the further you get up toward the top and larger the further closer you get to the bottom from the focal point. So the goal is to match your focal point with the very center of the material that you're cutting. And in doing so, you're gonna minimize the curve, just like right here, because if you slid this illustration down, you would see that the curve would get wider. So in doing so, you're gonna minimize the curve, and you're also going to get the most bang for your buck from the laser because it's not trying to dig into the top of this material uh, with this wide beam, and it's not trying to come out the bottom of this material with this wide beam. So I hope that helps guys. I hope maybe that will explain uh, to some of you guys what I mean when I say cheat your focus down. If I tell you to cheat your focus down, the doing it with this little leg, and they've actually got me a pretty good little illustration here. The way I did it with the X Tool D1 was I would take this little leg and I would slide the tip of it over to about right here. And that would allow my machine to drop ever so slightly. And I just kept doing that until I found that I was getting into the center of material. But 
instead of having to do that with the, the, uh, the main focus lever, now you can use this knob. And what that does is the way this thing built is built is that drops this, uh, the thicker material that you set it for, it drops the laser module independent of, of this leg. So basically all you're doing is you're taking, you're setting the focus and then you're dropping it two millimeters on four millimeter material, you would set it for, you know, two, a little over two uh, for my four and a half and you're dropping the laser. And when you drop the laser, you push this focal point from here. This is where the little leg focuses it to, is the edge of the, material, the top of the material. But when you deduct using the secondary adjustment, two millimeters, it pulls you into the middle of the material. And that's the way that thing works. That's what it's intended for. And if you're not using it, guys, you're missing out because it does make a big difference. It took me a little while of, of playing with it and figuring out exactly what it was. There wasn't a lot of videos out there that kind of uh, explained it, I guess you could say. Uh, I didn't see this when I was looking at the, the 20 watt before. I don't know if they, uh, I don't know if this is recently added or if I just wasn't scrolling right or what. But, but anyway, this this is what the purpose of that is, guys. Minimize your kerf and get the most bang for your buck and be able to cut thicker materials using this adjustment so i hope that helps guys and i'm fixing to go get changed and go out to the shack and get to work got some stove covers today but this I, i've probably had 15 or 20 people message me or comment or whatever about the kerf difference in the 20 watt trying to make that decision on whether they wanted to get it or not so in essence i will tell you this a properly focused 20 watt if you properly focus it using this secondary adjustment right here the kerf is going to be less or equal to a 10 watt if you focus to the surface of the material in my opinion or it's going to be really 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 close so take that into consideration if you're running a 10 watt or a 5 watt and you're focusing to the surface of the material the bottom edge of your kerf is going to be significantly wider just like this illustration so in my application so far even some of my pieces that are supposed to be snug fit and tight fit i haven't done any snap snap together boxes yet with it most of the stuff i've been doing is blue ups but i'm still having to shake the pieces out of the original material because the kerf is so tight so but just take this stuff into consideration and i hope it helps and if you have any more questions or whatever like i said y'all feel free to keep messaging me and if i can figure this stuff out i'll let you know uh, not exactly a professional here. Uh, I do do my research and I do understand a lot of this stuff. So uh, if there's any way I can help you, I'll be more than glad. So uh, if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button on your way out. And thanks for stopping by.